Good afternoon, everyone. My journey as an educator um, has been one of constant growth and reflection over the past 30 plus years. Um, I've had clear, formative feedback uh, for many years from Margaret Heritage as a mentor. And this relationship really began uh, when she was my principal at East Kelly Law School. When I became founding principal at Barrazunia's charter school, Margaret gave me constructive, and I'll have to say, albeit, you know, very tough feedback, <laughs> while beginning, um, a, while building a school, really, um, in the Skid Row area of downtown Los Angeles. And it was there that um, I also began to work with Olivia Lozano. Hiring her in 2003 was probably one of the best decisions that I made. Um, Olivia um, and I are now currently working together at UCLA Law School. And I couldn't be prouder and more appreciative, truly, of learning from both my mentor and a mentee um, in this process of reflection and growth. Um, so uh, my objective today is really to give you an administrator's perspective in growth and development and in looking at the conditions that are necessary uh, for formative assessment. And these conditions are important in addressing the common core standards. Oops, sorry, I had a ten. Um, so what are the conditions that are important? Fostering a, a safe learning environment um, for all students, cultivating a professional learning community for the teachers, defining best practices in curricular areas by the teachers, and establishing systems of accountability that are flexible yet accountable. Um, as Olivia was mentioning, there are different aspects of the learning environment that are crucial in a school, and it is important that I as a principal work to provide professional development um, in these areas. So, um, we need to make sure that we are focusing on the social emotional component of the learning environment, the academic and the physical um, uh, environment. Olivia um, spoke about the importance of uh, having a safe environment for learning and um, that environment um, needs to be one where children feel safe to take risks. So as a principal, my work promotes a school culture with established systems that provides social emotional support for children. These supports develop problem solving skills that enable students to work together productively, listening to one another respectfully, building on each other's ideas, and also ensuring that the teacher is learning, uh, listening to the voice of the students. The collaborative skills allow for respectful argumentation when students have different perspectives and pose varying ideas. These skills allow for students to be open to feedback from teachers and from their peers. Um, the school culture, this school culture is actually very important in promoting uh, formative assessment to reach the Common Core Standards. So when I walk into classrooms, I look for evidence of a learning environment that is safe, social, emotionally, for children to learn and for children to engage in discourse. Now, the academic environment is also very, very important. And just as Olivia mentioned that she's a teacher, the teacher as researcher, and then that administrator also has to work thinking as a researcher, always looking for evidence um, of, uh, of the learning environment. So as principal, I look for evidence that the learning goals are clearly articulated, that children know the success criteria, that there is evidence of first-hand experiences along with easy access for resources for teachers and students that promote learning and real-life connections. Parent involvement is also very important, especially moving into the Common Core Standards. So it is important that we engage parents in a discourse as well. They have many, many questions, and it is important that they understand what formative assessment is how important it is in meeting the needs of their students and in um, how we differentiate instruction for the individual. The physical environment is also very important. We need to make sure that we are always promoting um, uh, an environment where it, that is child-centered. 
the collaborative furniture, the way that furniture is set up needs to promote collaboration. The student work needs to be very visible with feedback opportunities. Um, communal and individual work also needs to be visible. And just as the learning changes, it's important that the classrooms also reflect learning in progress. So the, the class needs to reflect both the process of learning and the product. And the uh, physical environment is also something that is important to be valued by all children and the teachers as well. So the next area is cultivating a professional learning community. Um, and this piece is very, very important. It's important to have committee structures where we give opportunities to teachers um, for shared leadership. So um, in both schools, I've uh, worked hard to establish regular times for teachers to collaborate. Um, currently at the lab school, we have a specialist time where the children are uh, taking physical education and they also have an elective, for example, Spanish language development in the school. Um, at Para Los Niños, there was also bed time, so we lengthened the regular day so that we could have two days a week for collaborative planning um, that allowed teachers to come together and, and focus in particular areas. Um, in addition to that, pupil free days are very, very important, both before the start of the school year, during the school year, and after the school year. So this process is important in cultivating a professional learning community. In addition, there needs to be a school-wide focus. Um, supports need to be in place for professional development. It is important that we have a master teacher or lead teachers who support teachers with lesson planning and unit planning. It's important to have master teachers who are also coaching teachers. Um, there are opportunities um, that need to be made for demonstration lessons and debriefing lessons with master teachers. Um, it is important that we also cultivate the idea of having professional book clubs with teachers. Also creating peer observations and walkthroughs with protocols that are determined by the teachers based on their understanding of what are best practices and especially when using formative assessment, how can you give one another feedback? Um, it is important as principal also that I set an agenda for an analysis of student work. So teachers need to collect evidence of student learning and they need to work at examining that collection of evidence and they need to develop and increase their skills in interpreting what that evidence tells them and then in determining what is the next step. Um, as an administrator, it's important that I also provide feedback so I am also doing formative assessment, and this is something that I also learned from Margaret because she gave it to me as an administrator. She would give me um, the next steps. This is something to work on. So, um, you know, with Olivia, for instance, it was important that I could go into the classroom, provide her some feedback, and then look for evidence of that. So that's the loop. Just as we have a loop with students, there needs to be a loop with the administrator and also with the teacher. And then as I collect evidence, then we need to determine collectively what we need uh, the professional development um, in. So that is sort of the, the, the loop in terms of growth as a school so that we continuously uh, reflect um, and determine the next step. One of the areas that is so crucial in a learning, um, in a professional learning community is the idea of how teachers collaborate. So um, one of the areas that I've worked in for the past two years is in pulling in adaptive schools professional development because it's important that teachers work effectively, productively, and respectfully. Just the way we expect children to engage in learning, it's important that we also engage the teachers and build those skills so that not the loudest voice is always heard, but that everybody has an opportunity to express their ideas, even if they're differing ideas, but it's important that we delve deeply. It's important that we establish norms of collaboration and also agreement within the different ways that we collaborate, either by teams, by levels, and committees. All of this is important because it's essential that we create a unified voice 
and unified purpose as a faculty together with our parents. Um, the more that we work on this, I think um, the, the, the more focused we will be as a faculty. Um, so I think one of the things that is um, absolutely essential in, in, in doing this is that as we work together, teachers become stronger in the area of formative assessment if they're collaborating and looking at children's work and then purpose becomes even deeper. One of the areas that uh, we've been working on at the laboratory school is um, we've been working on committee structures. And it's important that as a faculty we engage in defining what best practices are so that teachers actually have agency themselves. Um, so we've been working at, uh, with grade level representation in areas that teachers feel that they have expertise and interest in. Um, they articulate how they want to be held accountable, and then we are beginning to document through video and photo journals what those best practices are. Then we're going to be able to view them collectively and also to share them as part of our mission as a laboratory school. What we're also doing is we're creating protocols for observation and peer feedback within the different curricular areas. And we're also working on how to collaborate and inform parents through workshops. And these series of workshops need to be done because our parents are recognizing that there's a shift in teaching. And that practice is quite different. So when they hear formative assessment, they're not, they don't quite understand it. And just as it's new for many teachers, it's also new for parents. So um, that piece of informing the parents is, is uh, part of best practices as well. And then finally, um, it's important to establish systems of accountability with teachers. Now this has been a bit of a challenge because teachers do have different styles. What I'm looking for is to see how they're collecting that evidence. Is it systematized? How are they using that evidence to determine, well, first of all, what are their interpretive skills? And then how are they using that information to determine the next steps? In order to also have a system of accountability, I have to establish those periods of collaboration and hold the teachers accountable as to what they're going to be doing at that time. It's important also to give, to have a feedback loop for the teachers. Um, and to ensure that as an administrator, I'm also engaging in looking at what that data looks by class, by level, and school-wide. <coughs> so that eventually, then I can also use that information to modify instruction as needed school-wide. So I need to use form, or to look at formative assessment to see what the teachers are collecting in combination with the summative assessment so that decisions can be made um, you know, uh, collaboratively to move this school forward. So, um, anyway, it's been an exciting journey, and what I have to say, I'm a learner, and I'm constantly learning, and it's part of, even though it's UCLA Lab School, it means we're always constantly learning and refining our practice. Thank you.